What's up, real life infusion? This is Pastor PJ, obviously here, coming to you from our lovely studio. Uh, I just wanna say a big shout out to all of your technology specialists. If you are not involved in a technology area, my recommendation is you get involved. Um, there are plenty of areas where you can get involved. Uh, when church opens up again, <laughs> you can run a camera, you can run uh, the soundboard, you can run displays. There's all types of areas where you can join in and be part of the fun here. Uh, listen, as you know, we've been jumping on uh, Zoom every day at 12. And if your parents will let you, uh, or if you can get a device, make sure you jump on. If you have any questions, talk to Jose or Tiffany and they will get you that Zoom account. So it'll be legit. Well, the reason why I'm here is because normally we would have services Sunday and normally we'd have services Wednesday. And so I just wanted to bring a message to you during this time where we cannot connect physically, but just through technology. And um, I was thinking about this message and what I think would be appropriate for us at this time. Number one, I want to just gonna tell you flat out is I don't want you to lose your momentum. Uh, before we were, you guys were had amazing momentum moving in the Word of God, moving in the Spirit and praying in the Spirit, and also reading your Word. And so I just want you to remember to not to lose your momentum. Keep going, keep pushing, keep reading your Word, keep doing your 555, or now you have plenty of time, you can extend that out to 30, 30, 30 if you wish. But listen, take, your, take some time and make sure you meditate on the Word, make sure you read, meditate on the Word, make sure you get some prayer in there, and make sure you get some worship in there. All right, so today's message is a simple message, one that you've heard before a few months ago, but I just wanna reiterate it with what's going on. And I wanna share a little secret thing I think about Jesus thinks about this whole coronavirus, this whole sickness and stuff. Um, so we're gonna be in Philippians chapter four, and we're gonna start in verse six. So when you get there, say whoop whoop. All right, I'm assuming you're there. Here we go. It says this in verse six, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God, and let the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, this will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. So let me read this again for you again. Let me stop and explain a little bit. Look, God is saying in all situations in life, do not be anxious. I'm about to have a test. Don't be anxious. I'm afraid of corona. Don't be anxious. I'm afraid to get up on stage and worship the Lord and people will see me. Don't be anxious. Don't be anxious about anything. I'm about to give, here some bad news. Don't be anxious. It says this, be anxious for nothing. Nada, nothing. What's the definition of nothing? I don't know, but I can guess. I'm guessing it means nothing. <laughs> but in everything by prayer and supplication. What does that mean? It means we take everything that would cause us normally to be anxious and we take it to God and we say, Lord, what do you say about this? What is your thoughts? What is your heart? What is your intention about all of these things? And how can I navigate? How can I move through this without being anxious? Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. You know, God's intention for us is very clear. He doesn't want us to fall. He doesn't want us to suffer. He doesn't want us to do all those things. Uh, uh, regarding to sin and things of that nature. What he needs us to do is be obedient and for us to die to our flesh daily. And that's the suffering that we have to deal with. <laughs> uh, so here, let's read this again, uh, the second half. Bring everything to him with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Very important, and thanksgiving. It's telling the Lord, Lord, look, we know you know everything, and we know you know how to get us out of everything and how to navigate us through this life. So Lord, I just thank you and praise you right now that you're gonna give me the answers for me to move forward in this. And let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God. Now here's, here's, here's when you know 
And when you stop and listen, this, this sometimes just takes a second. Other times, it's going to take a little bit of time for you to pray through something and, and seek the Lord and then hear his thoughts and opinions and show you through the word what he thinks about things or by his spirit speaking to you. Listen to this. Uh, at the end of all that, you will have the peace of God. And that peace of God, uh, which is, passes all understanding. Listen, when you reach that point, when you've sought the Lord and you reach that point, the peace of God will come over you. And you'll be in the middle of the worst situation and you'll be at complete rest. Let's look at an example of that. Jesus sent his disciples with him uh, on board and said, let's go to the other side of the sea. And his disciples, which were sailors, and they knew how to uh, work a boat and do all that stuff and set sails and stuff I don't even know how to do. They were like, cool, let's go. But they were experienced. <clears throat> and they set off across the sea. And all of a sudden, the storm comes, and it's just throwing them around everywhere. I'm, you know, Peter was over there looking at John saying, don't puke, don't lose your lunch, you know, and <laughs> who knows what was going on, but it was bad. They thought they were going to die. You know, half of them were turning green, and uh, <laughs> and they run and rush to Jesus and say, Jesus, don't you care we're going to die? And he's like, brah, what you talking about? We're good. We're going to make it. And he gets up, calms the sea down, and keeps moving forward. How could Jesus be so at peace? Well, the reason why Jesus could be so at peace is because he knows the will of God. He knows that the, he's not going to die this way. He knows all of those things are not going to befall him so he can be at complete peace. And that's what the Lord is wanting us to do. He's wanting us to seek him, get the answers from him, and then be at complete peace in him and be at rest knowing, listen, listen to this that God is faithful, that even if you make a mistake in the moment, even if you make a bad choice or a wrong choice in the moment, his grace, his love, his all-sufficiency in all things is going to guard your heart and mind, is going to guard you and protect you. I, I'm telling you, his, his grace and he, his just amazing love towards you is not uh, bound up solely by your pure thoughts and intentions, and I hope I'm making this clear. Let me try this again. You ready for this? God's love is able to make every good and perfect thing abound to you. And so I just want to encourage you, listen, during these times, take, take a minute, to take some time, and listen to him. Listen to him. I can't tell you again. <laughs> I'm going to tell you one more time. Listen to him, and your life, I guarantee you, will be changed. Listen, don't take this time. Give me a second. <sighs> don't take this time and waste it. This is an opportunity. This is what I wanted to give you, I believe, God's secret perspective on things. Does God want anyone to perish? No. But listen, every, every time you see a sick person, every time someone's sick, someone's hurting, someone's something, I believe God gets excited. And he gets excited because he sent Jesus to this earth for us to live vicariously through him, to live vicarious through us. That way we can affect this entire world. Hear me out. When we look at people that are sick or hurting or whatever else, we should get excited and not run from that problem. And the reason is because we, out of anyone else in this world, have the ability to change those things. Listen, was Jesus freaked out when he didn't have enough food to feed all the people after he commanded the disciples? He didn't freak out. He knew he had inside of him the ability to create more food. Somehow he knew it, and you know what? The closer we get with the Lord, the more the Lord will show and, and show you the confidence inside of you that he has about you. Listen, when Jesus looked at the sick and dying, did he have compassion and say, oh, poor them, oh, they're just going to die? No. What did he do? He went out and set about healing and setting people free. 
and moving people from death into life. And he got, I believe he was excited. The Bible says he was the happiest person on this earth. Listen, when Jesus uh, ran into Pharisees and all kinds of things, uh, was he frustrated because he, listen, his frustration, I believe, was the fact that he came to die specifically for them and they kept rejecting him. That was his frustration, but did he love them? Absolutely, he loved them. Listen, I, I just implore you today. Implore, that's a big word. Let me just say it this way. I just encourage you today. Look for the sick. Look for the sneezing people. Practice social dis, uh, distancing by getting really close to them, okay? <laughs> and, and encourage those people and say, look, Jesus lives inside of me. Therefore, I'm not going to get sick. Therefore, I'm not going to die of anything that like this. Uh, one, probably Jesus is going to come back before I die. You can tell them not straight to their face and say, look, I have the cure for every di- sickness and disease. Would you like it? And they're going to look at you and think you're nuts, but you're going to go like this. In the name of Jesus, I command them to be healed right now. And whether you touch them or not, by the authority that lives inside of you, that sickness and disease will leave their body. Like I said a couple weeks ago, this is the time to double down. This is not the time to shrink back. This is the time to double down your efforts in the Lord, double down the pursuit of your friends, and double down on your personal walk. This is the time. All right, and I'm going to leave you with one last verse because I think I've been going long enough now, okay? Praise the Lord. All right, here we go. <clears throat> verse 8, Philippians 4, 8. says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, what's the truth? The word. Mm-hmm. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good of report, if there is any virtue... And if there's anything praiseworthy, anything praiseworthy, like, yo, your shoes look amazing, anything, try and find those things in every situation, whatever's praiseworthy. For instance, I'm stuck at home. At least you have a nice home. Thank you, God, I have a home. Thank you, God, I got a roof over my head. Thank you, God, I don't have to go out and hunt every day for my food. Whatever's praiseworthy. I don't feel good. Well, thank you, God, I got oxygen in my lungs and the Spirit of God running through my body, which is casting out all this junk. Find things that are praiseworthy in your life. Whatever things are praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Meditate on them. And listen, uh, just as the Bible says, I believe that your leaders have been a phenomenal example of this. Um, when, when different things hit you in life, you've got two options. Just remember this, two options. You can either get better or you can get bitter. And what I'm encouraging you is take every opportunity whenever life hits you to get better, not bitter. Listen, let me pray for you right now. And uh, we will catch up with you. Believe it or not, today, I'm filming this in the morning, today, at noon, we will be on Zoom for 21 days of prayer and just having a great time. So let's pray. Father, I just thank you right now in Jesus' name that your grace that surpasses all understanding and your love and your peace and every part about you that <laughs> we just have a sliver of knowledge would just enlighten our hearts and minds right now that we would have the peace of God right now in all these situations that during this time that we would spend extra time with you and that you would reveal to us the secret things about our lives. Ooh, this is about something, this is for somebody, about your calling, what God wants you to do on this earth, about how blessed you are, about a rewiring in your thought patterns. Lord, I thank you that yes, during this time that when we spend time with you, the, the constant depression that you've been struggling with would vanish and stay off of you because you filled yourself up. Lord, I just thank you right now. Yep. I thank you right now that even as this goes out, 
people that have been having suicidal thoughts, that that would stop now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you that you, this is for somebody, I'm not sure who it is, but that you would reach out to that friend that's been continually dealing with this. This is not the first time you've had this conversation. That you would speak life to them, that you would read them the scripture verse, Philippians 4, 8, and have them begin to just focus on the good things in life. Lord, I just thank you and worship you. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I just wanna encourage you again. <clears throat> Read, worship, and pray. I'm telling you, your life can be completely different. Listen, when I was your age, and now I'm, I, you know how old I am. When I was your age, I couldn't wait to get out of school. I couldn't wait to get out of these different situations. And, and now that I'm older, I'm like, oh, Lord, Lord, give me some time alone with you. <laughs> Let me just be with you. <laughs> and other times in my life, I'm like, Lord, I just want to go do something. But, you know, here's the deal. Um, if you make it a consistent pattern in your life, uh, you will be amazed. Again, you will be amazed. You think you can go so far in a short period of time, which you can. But the reality is, if you just continually do little bits over a little bit of time, long period of time, the distance that you can travel with the Lord will just be absolutely amazing. So be blessed. Have an amazing day. I love you. Bye.